Graveyard has 38 cards in it. Oh my gosh. Dance of the Mance. Are you kidding me? Woo! <laughs> Clutch! Hello, good game. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch. Today, we have another brand new free-to-play deck from Strixhaven. This time, we are playing with Prismari. That is the color combination of blue and red, formerly known as Is It, and I guess still is. However, not in Strixhaven School of Mages. This is, a. Uh, it's hard to say. You guys, I have a confession. This is a mill deck. I'm so sorry. It has the Ruin Crab in it. I'm so sorry. Um, but, you know, as a free-to-play individual, you have to do what you gotta do, right? You wanna still get those results without, uh, you know, getting bullied all the time. And every now and again, we just get broken on commons, and the Rune Crab is one of them. Uh, you know, this card has been terrorizing people for months and months and months, and it will for months to come. Uh, of course, we'll break down the deck list because it's not just the Rune Crab in play. We have a ton of brand new cards in the deck that we'll discuss. And then, of course, you know, we'll go through the gameplay footage, break down all of our play lines and interactions as well. This way, you not only get a good idea of how the deck operates in theory, but how it's going to operate in the real world meta. And then you can make a decision as an individual whether or not this deck is right for you and your wild cards. Uh, I know I have a lot of people asking, well, how do I get these decks for free? You say they're free to play beginner decks. Well, you know, you do like five drafts and then you have enough commons and uncommons, you guys. Like, don't give me a hard time because the deck doesn't come in the game already. They are so easy to collect. You know, most creators have decks filled with rares uh, and mythics. And even I do this because, you know, we like to win. Um, so be grateful for what you get. Uh, you know, the deck's great. It's going to operate at the highest levels that a beginner artisan deck could operate. So, you know, that's your disclaimer, so I don't have to deal with any more of those Karens in the comments. You know who you are. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, again, thank you so much for your time and attention. Let's get into it. Sixty cards, best of one standard, free to play Prismari, 3.1 average mana drop within the deck, 30 non-creatures and 8 creatures. Uh, you know, we do have 22 land within the deck, which is very, very light considering the average mana cost. However, I don't care, right? I always flood. I pulled way too many land, so I like to trim it back. There is also a lot of draw within the deck, so you should not have uh, that hard of a time finding that land as it comes around. Of course, we do have a full learn board or lesson board for uh, the build today which is really uh, where this deck shines. Some of our newest additions are Practical Research. For five mana at instant speed, draw four cards, then discard two cards unless you discard an instant or sorcery. So the draw four at instant speed is incredible. We also have four copies of Pop Quiz for three mana, instant speed, draw a card, and learn, which is great. This takes us into our sideboard. We have two copies of Mercurial Transformation, Sorcery speed lesson until the end of turn, target non-land, permanent loses all abilities and becomes your choice of either a blue frog, that's a 1-1, or a 4-4 octopus. Two copies of environmental science, also sorcery speed, searching our library for a basic land card, revealing it, putting it into our hand, shuffling, then gaining two life. A single copy of start from scratch for three mana, also at sorcery speed, choose one, deal one damage to any target or destroy target artifact. Two copies of introduction to prophecy, Sorcery speed, scry two, then draw a card. And this is actually my favorite uh, and go to within the sideboard unless we need, you know, uh, a land for our crabs that are stacked up or we need to potentially uh, shut down uh, a blocker, which is not the case here. But we could also, you know, potentially turn our crab into a 4-4, uh, which is nice. But, you know, it's it's more for flavor than anything. Uh, so that's the sideboard. And again, we're getting into that with the pop quiz and my primary card to pull is Introduction to Prophecy because the scry to and draw a card. However, you can also go into environmental sciences uh, as well. We are stacking in the deck Teferi's Tutelage as our main engine and enchantment for three. When Teferi's Tutelage enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. 
as many stacks as this we can get, uh, you know, is better because then they're triggering multiple times and most of the deck will revolve around draw. We already showed you practical research. We also have into the story for five mana, instant speed, three less to cast if an opponent controls seven or more in their graveyard. They will because you're milling them. Draw four cards, right? That's great. We also have channeled force at instant speed for four as an additional cost to cast the spell, discard X cards, channeled target draws X card and channels force deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. So you get a little bit of removal against any of those big baddies that are threatening you within uh, channeled force. Plus, you know, you're wiping your hand of things you don't want, grabbing a bunch of things that you do while milling your opponent uh, if you have tutelage in play, which is great. We have opt, draw one, scry one, good times, let them roll. <laughs> the Secret Keeper, Venture Deeper for one mana, Sorcerer Speed, milling four cards, and the, you know, it's a zero four. So this is good to start the game, get that mill, and you get a defender, right? Uh, speaking of defenders, the Crab, zero three, Landfall, Neverland, enters the battlefield. Under your control, each opponent mills three cards. The Wilds to double trigger on top of the Crab is great. Walry's Disruption, you know, to up that land total uh, from 22 to 24, uh, but again, allowing us to use it as a spell if we see fit to counter our opponent. We also have Didn't Say Please to counter our opponent, allowing us to mill three cards as well at instant speed. That's the deck. We've got 12 and 6 for basics. Again, the sideboard is here, accessible via pop quiz. The deck strategies and synergies consist on stacking copies of Teferi's Tutelage and then using your three payoff spells into the story, practical research, and channeled force. Controlling the match with Didn't Say Please, Walry's Disruption, defending against Aggro with Rune Crab, Secret Keeper, and Channel Force. Stopping any combo decks with Walry's Disruption and Didn't Say Please. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, you guys got it all handled. Thanks again for your time and attention. I really appreciate all of the love and support on the channel recently. Our views are through the roof. And, uh, you know, the free to play support has been there as well. So I hope you guys enjoy today's deck and the video. More importantly than all of that, have a magical day. If you're interested in any of the contest giveaways, uh, you know, the Discord link, um, you know, any of our affiliate links, all of that you can find within the Linktree link in the description below. And you can Google Hello Good Game Linktree if you uh, can't find it there. So have, like I said, a magical day. Don't forget to watch to the end because we've got not only great footage, but some really cool wrap-up thoughts as well. Okay, our opponent plays first. You know, we have the land, but the rest of it looks like not good. But I can't justify mulliganing just to find Teferi's tutelage when we find it right on the top anyways. Beautiful. Let's take the mill. Wowzers. Control Arama with Yorion at the helm. Esper Yorion. Let the good times roll. Teferi's tutelage can get rocked by Elspeth Conqueror's death. Omen go. Draw here is totally fine with me. Uh, you know, they got a big deck though, right? 80 cards, however will we get through it? <laughs> we can barely do 60. Well, no, last game we would have gotten a little bit more than that. Wild, because we can't count on a crab drop, right? And I don't want to get held up not playing to my full potential on tapped land, so let's just get it out of there. Get going, boy! Oakley Dokley. That gets into our hand though, and that pulls probably our into the story. Right? So let's get tutelage in play. Discarding probably the wilds. And that should be fine. Nightmare discards our graveyard. If they want to do that. Oh, they're not looking at our graveyard yet. It's uh they're picking from our hand. So we've got basically three cards that all do the same thing. Um 
So it's going to be really up to them. I think Channeled Force is the best one. But we'll have to see. Practical research is cool. They know into the story. They're like, well, they get the cost reduction on that next turn anyways. And it basically does the same as the others. So that's a good option too. They may hold up counter magic here. No. Unless it's something silly. Miscast. Don't sh dare do this to me. Okay, and then they, they push that over. So that's fine. Um... You know, this is instant speed. We could opt them out for something else. Like, we've not played a land this turn. So what if we opt into a land? Get the mill. But we can't do that with the other one, that means. Oh, and we did play a land. You fool. I didn't think we played a land. I'm so sorry. Channeled Force isn't bad, but it can go if we're going to discard anyways. I honestly thought we didn't play a land. Okay, first mistake. We lose our graveyard. We don't have a two draw. I feel so silly. They're looking into their grave. Like, they've got uh, an Elspeth Conqueror's Death in hand. They're going to take our tutelage. They need uh, another land in play, though, to go to five. There it is. Yorion in over. So they want to be bouncing Elspeth Conqueror's Death, probably. So they get Yorion in hand first. But fortunately for us, you know, we are in a position to hold up didn't say please. Everything in hand is instant speed. They gain two life. They're down to 52. You know. It's like we're just starting a match. I have to protect tutelage with everything I've got. Huh. You know, I'm not into just losing life over and over and over. So that's their turn. Down to 49. Okay. Hopefully we draw a land. Yes. Toss channeled force. Mill for four. We got an ECD. Island in play. We have pop quiz at instant speed past turn. That's another mill for four. They're at 42. Cry. <laughs> we only have to mill for four ten more times. No big deal. Yorion bounces Omen. That's like a bikini Yorion. Not much cover up there. Owen oh, back in play. Before they draw, let's do pop quiz in case they do get a counter. And then we take the scry two draw card, I believe. Just any draw is good. Another ECD, that's good news. We can mail for four here. Two Doom Foretolds. Okay, those are going to be a problem. Those are going to be a problem for us. Next, and turn. We do have a counter spell up. If we don't have to counter, we have practical research. They have eight mana up. What couldn't they do? 28 cards in library. Further than I thought we'd get, to be honest. We 
we go down to 16 for sure. They're looking through their grave. There's a lot of goodies in there. Don't you dare. All right, Graveyard has 38 cards in it. Oh my gosh. Dance of the Mance. Are you kidding me? Woo! <laughs> clutch! Absolutely clutch. Okay, they're down quite a few. Yeah, we're about to practical research. Oh my gosh. We had massive mill. We milled the Yorion deck. Can we do it? Can we get a mill win? Oh my gosh, I hope so. I certainly hope so. We're gonna save you for the crab. You're gonna get us the win. Evolving Wilds. A double tutelage? Come on, we also have Into the Story. There's no way we lose this. I'm about to eat my own words. A zero four? Okay, that is good news. We're playing against a limited deck. We've got this, you guys. Watch us just mill a bunch of escape cards. Um... Secret Keeper can go. The pop quiz is more valuable on top of uh, Teferi's Tutelage. If, especially if there's two of them. Alright, so we get hit for four. Could be worse. I guess. Probably is worse next turn. <laughs> So there was no crab attack. The land is pretty important to me. We do have a channeled force next turn. For, well, it depends if we throw the story away or not. We could be discarding five cards. Um, you know, milling for ten. Which is not enough. They sell way too many. And they hit for like seven damage here. Oh my gosh, we're gonna get beat by this mill deck, like I talked about. And we threw away our defender, like a dummy. Okay, so they don't hit us with the full wrath. They probably want to play another creature. Oh my gosh. Down to 37. I think we keep into the story. One, two, three, four. No. Five, and we're gonna draw another. Right, we also have, um, you know, that other brand new card that uh, does the same thing. We don't get it. That makes me want to ball my eyes out. We've got copies of it. Um, practical research is the one I'm thinking of. And we do mill for 20 here, uh, which is acceptable, but we should have kept into the story. Why not? Disruption can go. Another mill for four.
Down to 12. I think I can get it. Raid bombardment does help them. And they can push up the Ravager after the bombardment triggers. So we have for two... Four, five, six, seven potentially. Um, and an additional five here. Takes us down to seven. Never mind. Takes us down to five. We top deck like a friggin' god. We knew it was there. We were gonna get to it. And thankfully, we just get the winner, winner, chicken dinner full. Uh, another huge mill, which is great. And we're lucky enough to pull practical research, which is great. We've got the crab, uh, and a land, and a mill. So we would get it even if there were more cards uh, there, which is great. And that is game. We do get a win. Uh, albeit against a limited deck, but, you know, we're free to play deck too, right? So it's only fair. Let's try again. Our opponent plays first bummer we do have a story we have a tutelage there's no mill off the start let's just get that land in there real slow like we'll be okay some silver quill on the opposing board state. Oh, gross. Gross, 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 gross. What are we going to do about that, ladies and gentlemen? I do not know. We're going to opt. That's going to fix our land issue. If not, I'm going to feel silly. I'm pretty sure this is our uh, Silver Quill free-to-play deck that we're up against. And I'm just sad because I know how strong it is. <laughs> right? We're going to get bullied so hard here. This is one of my favorite free-to-play decks so far. I like the Witherbloom one, which is similar to what we just seen. But, uh, you know, everybody's rocking pests right now, so it's kind of cool to be unique. And I really do like the Orzhov Flyers. So that was a uh, Kai's Onslaught or whatever it is, the double strike. The land is good, we keep it. Let's get that story going for us. Discarding. Our pop quiz. Okay, so this is definitely our free-to-play deck. Shadewing, uh, Laurinette, and the Killian Ink Duelist in play. Battlefield Raptor, go. Do they give plus one double strike to Spirit? We get hit for six. Don't you do it. Don't do it to us. It's really cool to be able to play one of my free-to-play decks against another one of my free-to-play decks. Oh, Badgery Solidarity. Nice, 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 nice. If you're interested in the breakdown of this video, check it out. It's on my channel in the free-to-play playlist. Oh, but we come in tapped here. That is such a bummer. I think we have to pop quiz and look for a land. Not that it matters because we're tapped, so we may as well wild anyways. We're not doing anything here. Scratch your draw card, sure. It's gonna be a quick match for our opponent. No! Trying to get wins with this mill deck. People have been, uh, you know, bothered by mill long enough, I guess. 
right? Checking their grave. This means called the Death Dweller. Okay, here's the Shade Wing. Not quite Death Dweller time. And then they dual strike something. Oh my gosh. I do love this deck. It's a great deck. Uh, a proud dad deck moment. Right, where you get beat by your own creation. Just be silly. We'll give them the hearts. Right. Yeah, Kaya's Onslaught. Called it. Oh my gosh. Right? Oh my gosh. Starkiller, you dog. Using my own deck to beat me. How dare you do this? <laughs> Down to three. This is still a match somehow. They're at 41. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you know, this is kind of how it's supposed to work. You have tutelage in play, you do massive channel force. Your opponent mills a million cards and you win the game. But, not today. Not today. We get them a little bit. We get them an itsy bitsy amount, you know, halfway through their library, I guess. It's not good enough. You know what I mean? Oh, crab in play. Look out. We've got a blocker. <laughs> we do have another tutelage into an immediate into the story. So you can see if we had another turn, we probably would have won the game. Um,. Well, maybe not. We would mill 4 plus mill 8, which is 12. They still have 26. That is not a good game. It's close, but it is not a good game. Plus the land for another 3, right? So we get up to 15. It's a little bit. It's not enough. And, uh, yeah, we just get called here, which is great. I twitch in the house for the learn ability, you know, also within the shade wing. And that is a very, very good game. Getting bashed down by our very own deck. Check it out, it's on the channel. Alrighty, let's go! Practical research into the story. We even have, what is it, channeled focus, I believe. Lots of cool stuff going on here. Can we mill our opponent? Probably not, but heck, we're gonna try. Scry one to get us going. Secret Keeper is not that bad. Gives us something to do on turn two. A mill plus a block. Watch us mill a Polacranos right out of the gate. It seems to be pests, which is pretty frightening. Um, we'll go in with a tutelage next turn. Story after that. The Secret Keeper doesn't really pose a threat, so they're more likely just to play Love Struck Beast and dash through with it. There's no crab in hand, so I think we should toss the wilds. There's a lot of big boys in here. Wow, this is really gonna hurt. Alright, so we can into the story now. Oh my gosh, we just milled a henge. We could pop quiz for three, but this is three as well. We 
We really should put a blocker out. But then we're not getting the mill. Oof. 42 left. That is so many. We're going to get hit for 6. Let's pass our turn. We just milled the Great Hen, so there's not likely to be one in that draw. This is uh this is the hard part. Taking six damage here down to thirteen. That five five is silly good. Nothing to deal with our opponent yet. We will just have the blocker that they can probably destroy. Another henge is gone. Still no crabs. Down to 31. It's unfortunate there's no better way to spend our mana than this instant speed pop quiz. I do want to save that, save that secret keeper. Oh, they sacked it. Oh my gosh. That's actually good news for us, isn't it? Unless they are going to dominate that stack and just kill us with it. And we should have held up, didn't say please, instead of the defender. But I thought they were going to hit us for another 6, and I wasn't really willing to accept that. Oh, it's just because it's so much damage, because of all the 1-1s. One one Yikes. There's no damage. Well, that, that kind of is. If they copy Plume, that's GG's. We should have held up Counter Magic. No. So draw a card and learn. It's the best way to use our mana. Let's take the draw effect. I don't think we can do that many cards this turn. Even if we counter... We're getting hit. For three. Well, no, it wouldn't die. So six we'd get hit with if we countered. And we need three to counter, which gives us two, three. We could double counter. They're at 22. Leaves us with one spare mana. Just getting a second defender out, I think, is good to mitigate as much damage as we can. If they cast on our end step and then their main, then we're screwed. But if they do the sack effect first. But the co we, we can only counter one. We can't counter the whole stack of copies. 
which is kind of what makes Plume so busted. Doesn't Ten the Pest just make a 1-1? One, one? Okay. I still think they have Plume. And I still think we're super dead. Target creature gets minus a bunch. We can do it. Let's do it. If they have it, now we're screwed. But I don't think they do. They do, it's on the stack. But, you know, we can't... Even when we copy this, um, you know, every creature they sacrifice, it copies itself, so even if we were to counter it, we wouldn't get around it, um, because we can't counter all of the copies, you know what I mean? Um, and it's an additional cost to cast this spell. Um, go view battlefield here, I'll, I'll zoom in on it. Um, da -da -da. Right, as an additional cost to cast this spell, so as they cast it, they've already sacrificed this creature, so there's nothing we can do about it, and as they do, they copy it, and we literally cannot counter each individual copy unless we're using a spell like Whirlwind Denial, uh, which was in our last deck. So we get close, you know, down to 17, and the Wither Bloom, you know, just reigns supreme. Woof. Alrighty, so we redeem ourselves, right? We got a couple wins. We did the dirty 50%. You know, yeah, sure, we need a mean limited deck, but we're a mean limited deck. But then. But then, we beat a tier 2 Yorion Esper control deck. Oh my gosh. This deck has more rares in it than we have cards. You know what I mean? So I'm really proud of that. And it just goes to show you the power of Teferi's tutelage. If you can stack it and then, you know, start playing Channel Force practical research into the story on top of it. I do wish I could have included more new cards into the deck. This is a very friendly one for you guys to get in on. You know, four copies of Practical Research is nothing. And then the sideboard here uh, is pretty easy to collect as well. Um, I do like the synergy within Pop Quiz on top of Teferi's Tutelage as well. I just wish that our lesson cards were better, right? I wish we had counter spells as lessons. I wish we had, uh, you know, stuff like this, right? So let me know how you guys would improve the deck, how you would change the deck. As far as upgrading the deck, you know, I'm not sure that this deck is worth upgrading entirely. However, you know, there is some pretty cool options with Jin Channel Force, uh, the Everwise. But this is like super meme town. I don't know if I'd be recommending you guys spend your wild cards on this. Whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. You know, that just combos with the Channel Force on top of Teferi's Tutelage. Uh, basically to make it twice as powerful because you're discarding 10, drawing 10, and then drawing another 10 because you discarded 10. Meanwhile, that triggers Teferi's Tutelage 40 times. You know what I mean? So the Everwise is pretty disgusting here. Um, you know, there's lots of other things that we could potentially uh, put in the deck. However, I just don't think they're that important. Um, you know, it's, it's a really easy search here to draw. Um, and then you can find stuff. So multiple choice uh, could easily go in. The Magma Opus could potentially go in. Uh, Prismari Command, you know, is another option here because draw two, then discard two. Um, so some really nice options. But unless you are already playing these cards in another deck, I don't know if I would go out of my way 
uh, to be spending, you know, all of the rares and mythics to upgrade this particular deck. Unless you love the mill, you can't get enough of the mill, in that case, sure, go all out. Another suggestion, you could use the uh, shift shifter or the, uh, the land, um, the rogue that copies a creature and you could copy your crab potentially. You know, that's gonna be an, op an option for you guys. So there's lots of stuff here that you could do to upgrade it, like I said, but I'm just not entirely convinced that this is the deck for you guys to be spending those wild cards on if you only have a few of them. If you do have some, you know, upgrade it like you would any deck. Take a look and just try to grab value that's strictly better than, right? Try to fit in, you know, just a little bit of flavor here and there. Uh, don't butcher it and restart. Um, just those little additions, right? If you had a single copy of Rael, sure. You know what? Throw one of those in the deck. If you had a single copy of Magma Opus, throw that in the deck. Uh, stuff like this, right? So with that all being said, uh, let me know what you guys think uh, of these decks. Are you looking for an in-depth upgrade guide no matter what? If it's, uh, you know, a deck worth your time or not? Or do you appreciate me telling you like, hey, you guys, this is probably a pretty memed out deck. I'm not sure if you want to sink the wild cards into it, right? Or should I just do both? Give you the warning and then still give you those options uh, a little bit like I did today, but maybe a bit more in depth. I don't know, right? We're still trying to figure out this new free to play format for the upgrade guides at the end. Uh, again, any suggestions and opinions are greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for your time and attention. I hope you have a great day. In fact, a magical day, one might say. And uh, of course, we'll see you soon in the next video.